today we're going to start with our counter-rotating project for the Tiger Cat and actually for the A26 but I wanted to show a couple of things that we got in the meantime from Bernie Trent some nice pictures of the Goodyear blimp he sent me one of his club newsletters that's a nice newsletter that he's got and we swap stuff back and forth all the time this is a Dick Matthews uh, Richard Matthews yeah Dick Matthews design I'm sure is going to make less crazy a Sky Raider this is itching to get going on a Sky Raider we're all itching to get ready with our buildings and just some of the pictures that are in their club newsletter Dave Ray's in the Sheik's Hurricane we really like this plane too we have that on the Brodak videos and one of the photos from Brodax, I don't think anybody will ever forget now because if you remember on the last tape I got a snow cone machine I'm trying to pressure John into getting a snow cone machine so we can have snow cones out at Brodax next year I'm not sure that's going to happen we love twins and the sounds they make. Boy, don't we all love twins. Part of a popular science magazine. It's got a nice article about Reno. And some nice pictures here, in fact. There's never a time when you have enough Reno stuff, that's for sure. And AT6s, boy, if I ever remember my AT6 ride, whoo, one of the high points of my uh, very uneventful life. Bernie Trent, a great magazine. I will enjoy reading this. From Bernie Trent, too. And I, I never saw this before. It's a mini cutoff saw. Perfect cuts in a tenth the time. Cuts are smooth. Includes one high-speed blade. Yada, 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 yada. And like I said, Bernie and I are always swapping stuff. Look at this little blade. Ooh. Now I always have a... We got a big table saw in the last video, too. You know what? Rather than, rather than find a spot to put this right now, I want to wait till Les gets here. Les is pretty good at setting up and getting these saws to work, but this is a cool little thing. Let's see what this little puppy looks like. Always look at, you never have too many tools. Tools are like snow cones, you never have too many of them. Let's see where to go. Okay. have to get get less busy setting this up. I can see this requires some setup. But anyway, that's a nice little tool. If you've never done a, a compound miter saw, which I have a big one, but you can't, it's ridiculous to be cutting balsa with on a compound miter saw. This is from Bernie Trent. I think we're going to find some use for this. I'm going to have less do his usual precision job of setting it up and we'll find a place to put it. That's certainly going to add a nice dimension to our building on the Tiger Cat project. So the real purpose of this video is going to be to, uh, well, to try to develop a set of counter-rotating props. And I just, as I always do, I try to look at some of the Tiger Cat pictures. We got these from Rich Oliver. It's such, such a sleek, beautiful plane. We've had, in the time since the last time we shot video, we've had some, some really exciting ideas. We found out that we can get match sets of APC props, but they're six inches of pitch. We also found that on Zinger, you can get three blade Zingers, 11 fours reverse pitch. They didn't have any in stock, so we have those on back order. And as you can imagine, I mean, everybody deals with modeling and how it affects their life a little different. But I'm already dreaming about this project. And look how big the prop is in relationship to the plane. Now that gives you some food for thought. They cells are very small. They're big in diameter, but small in size. Anyway, Richard shot these photos in down right by his own house, somewhere in Texas. 
at the big the big radial. But as you can imagine, we're just psyched. And now the purpose of this, and let me do a little storyboard, because we love the Tiger Cat, of course. We're already dreaming about it, thinking about it, scheming about it. But but we still have some of this flying season left. And this is something you can always you can always use to your advantage if you know that's how you want to go about it. And in my case, it's the dreaming that's part through a part of part of what I do and what I enjoy doing so much is part of it is the dreaming. Just dreaming about things that are gonna happen in the future. And if you don't dream, I don't know how you can really make a lot of this stuff happen. You gotta start with dreams. But let me start with a little storyboard here of what we're gonna try to do in the next couple of weeks. And we'll try to include it on this tape. So what I'm gonna to try to accomplish, make a little sketch here. We have a little bit of time left in 2004. And we want to learn something about the counter-rotating props. And these would be the things in order of importance, I think, is the first step is to get the crankshaft, get a reverse crank. That's already in the mail, coming from Texas, from Rich Oliver, of course. Uh, the second step is going to be to get some props. They're called pusher props. Now the ones we've ordered are APC, 11.6, and that's a match set. Zinger makes 11.5s, which I think are going to have more realistic pitch, a match set. And of course what we want to do is we're, we've already carved, and we're going to carve another one in fact, a reverse image of one blade. Once we know which one of these is going to be an appropriate choice, we will take one blade and, and try to then mold, make a mold for one blade so we have three identical blades. These will be pusher blades. And then make a mold for a three-bladed prop, which we haven't done on video in, well, in a long time since we did the five-bladed props. So anyway, we, we're trying to do this in a logical step. And, and what we want to do is from all of this information, the other part of this will be if the rules, and Richard thinks the rules have already changed, starting January 1st, that we won't need 35s. We can then upgrade to 40 size motors, which I think will give us a little more flexibility. But what would be nice is to have all these possibilities all figured out and ready to put right into the Tiger Cat the first day we fly it. In other words, all the development time that we're doing in 2004 the only purpose for even flying a plane for the rest of the season is to develop some of these things. Now we did that flap adjuster and that, that really did work pretty well. And that's an upgrade. And if we can get upgraded into 40 size motors, that's gonna be a big upgrade. And if we can get reverse props molded and know which pitch is gonna be appropriate, well what it's gonna be is we'll have a big giant head start on the 2005 season when it comes time to fly. So given that, that's the thrust of what we're gonna be doing. And the first step is gonna be when we physically get the crank in house here in a couple of days, and then to pull one of the motors apart. The second part of this, let me do a storyboard on it. Looking to a lot of people, Al Raby, Will Huben, Dave Downey, people that have, Bob Zambelli, that have information we may be able to use, hopefully be able to use. So here's our A26, and the first thing is going to be to decide, now from seeing Gilbert Berenger's plane, of which good thing we have about 14 of those flights on tape, well, he's chosen to run his engines this way. But, but Al Raby had suggested to us that, w that a better way would be to run them this way, fly a couple of days, and then put this motor here and this motor here so then in effect they'd be turning this way and then see which way the plane was friendlier. Now you would think or hope, and it's the consensus of opinion of all the people that I've spoken to, including Al who has given me a lot of feedback on this, that this would be a major upgrade over having two engines turning one way. That it would be, in some ways, smooth the airflow evenly over the plane. Maybe, maybe get rid of some GP, even though this plane seems to have very little, if any, GP. Possibly because of the really large rudder. That's usually a, a, 
has a good effect on GP, kills it. But imagine a plane, if this does work out, that, that would have the stability that comes from having dihedral in the stab, the, sta the stability of having a big rudder, and the stability of having an even airflow on both sides of the fuselage. Now, I don't know where and when this is all going to pan out, or if it's all going to pan out this season. But I know it's not going to pan out at all if I don't get busy and work on some of these things. But again, the first thing, I don't want to get the APC prop ahead of the crank. The first step, as always, is to get the crankshaft. And when we do that, when the day we get the crank, we're going to uh, hopefully pull the motor apart, clean it up a little bit, see if there's any wear on any of the parts, which there usually isn't. The Rojet engines just seem to be bulletproof, especially those bar stocks. They are just unbelievable. But we'll check it anyway and get the reverse crank in. And then I had even thought possibly of taking a couple of days with our test plane and sorting out props in the test ship. Because we really know how that flew with, with the props turning counterclockwise. Well, now that we're going to have a box or a handful of props turning the other way, well, we'll see if it makes any difference flying on a single engine plane. Somewhere in this test we're going to do that though. But in the meantime, maybe take a day that it's a marginal day that you really don't want to fly uh, the bomber. Certainly don't want to go flying a bomber anytime the weather isn't real nice. It's my, it's my Sunday Ducati kind of plane. But anyway, we really do want to work on this. Now what's the worst that can happen? In the worst of all worlds, there's little or no gain. Well, if there isn't, you know what, you can always put the other crankshaft in. And you've at least learned something that hopefully you didn't know before. And, and we're in the business of learning. Not only in the business of passing information on, but in the business of learning, and learning in the real world. And I think we're going to be able to do that in the next week or two, and we're going to share it all on this tape, or as much of it as we can. Uh, today we got our crankshaft from Dub. And you can see how he identifies it as a R, the reverse turn and crankshaft. The way you know it's a reverse turn and crankshaft, look at where the pin is. And they, they machine it 45 degrees on this side instead of 45 degrees on this side. And just in case people like me forget, it's, it's marked. I also got in stock, and Zinger was nice enough, usually they make a a batch of props, they sell a minimum of six in a bag, but because I have a lot of sex appeal, the girl out there seemed pretty willing to take a bag and put half reverse turning. And these are 11.5, these would be the normal ones. Now we have 11.5 and you can see what happens. The reverse ones go in that direction. So we have three of each to carve and cut and play with as we get ready to test this. And they're predicting some real nice weather, so uh, what I'm going to try to do is get one more day of flying on the old props because I have some APCs coming. I don't want to go out to the field with only one set of props. I'm going to get one flight and that'll be the end of the day. So I get one more day of flying without the reverse turn and crank and then we're going to get into, well, hopefully, swapping the crank out and getting on with our test program here. It looks like we got some nice weather out there. Now in my lifetime, and I'm going to be 59 later this week, I've had a lot of things, a lot of curveballs come my way, things that unexpectedly made for a turn in the road. Today Rich Jacobone and I were out at the flying field, we were getting ready to test. This was actually going to be the last day of testing on our motors, where both motors turn the same way. Rich had to get up and leave, and it was getting... Well, just a day I just wanted to stay at the field. And we've always had geese and birds flying over that field. And today we had one fly into the outer nacelle. Now, the bad news is, the really bad news, I killed a bird and I feel terrible about it. The second bad news, this is really going to set our program back. I, I think I've already made one of these already. But... Now luckily I do have patterns for everything. Mike Costello actually has them. In fact, let me get the phone. We have patterns for everything, so this may not be as bad as it looks. 
hey, while I was on the phone, I got to clean up these pieces anyway. One thing I noticed, uh, I always tell people you have some kind of a crash, some kind of an event, save the pieces. Now, this plane obviously is never going to win the concourse again. We're done. And, and it was nice that we did. We will always remember it as a concourse winner. But one of the things it could serve, and I don't want to make this decision today. This is the point that I always make to people. Save the pieces. Put them in a box or a bag. Rich has a stuka that needs a big repair. And as an example, you see all this damage to the outer wing. All of these shotgun holes and all of these pieces missing. And I, got, I think I have most of the pieces, though. And what it let me know is that my motor mount system... That let go and hopefully didn't do any more damage. But uh, maybe in the future we need to change something here. We're going to look around at it. All of the places where I would have expected to have total damage, it, it looks like it survived pretty well. The motor mounts, actually except for where the bolt holes are, survived pretty well. And it may be that this is not as bad, that a week from now when I look at it, I won't be all disgusted and frustrated. But right now I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty disgusted, let me tell you. I'm laughing, but I'm crying. But what I feel the worst about is that there is a bird. Well, he's dead, and it's just like when you run over an animal. You run over a baby rabbit or a raccoon or something, you really feel terrible when you feel that thump, and I've done that already. Now, it looks like, just to analyze, make a little thing up, if this same damage had happened to the inner wing, I would have abandoned this job. And the simple reason is, a repair like this is going to add two, three, four ounces to the plane. The only issue that I have to really even worry about here is all of this weight will be on the outside. And I've gotten rid of most of the, uh, the blood and feathers here, but what happened here, of course, this, this really took a beating after it. <laughs> after, you wouldn't believe it. I wish I had the camera running, in fact. I, I don't really wish. I'm kind of glad I didn't have a camera running. I'm glad I... Uh, the other people that were in the park were just shocked. There were two people in the park, a jogger and somebody just sitting there, and they, they thought it was part of, a, uh, part of a normal flight, I guess. I don't know, but I still feel terrible about the bird, of course. Anyway, what I'm going to do is put this aside for a couple of days and uh, fly Miss Ashley and just kind of cool it for a couple of days and then think about what I want to do. Always best to just think it through. There's no rush. And of course, one of the choices we have, we can make that decision tonight, tomorrow. We can put the motors, the counter-rotating set of motors into the B-25 and use that for the rest of the season. But in the meantime, we have Miss Ashley, we have the Typhoon. We have a lot of other things to, uh, always good to have a couple extra planes in the Air Force. And I wouldn't want to rush this because I could, one of the things that I could be doing here and I'll talk to Les and a couple other people. One of the options that we have right now is to turn this into what amounts to be a test plane, where we're going to be able to test motors and test props, and in the next year we hope it's going to be official that we can use 40s and we really could use a test plane. That was nice to see our carbon tank. There's no damage at all to the carbon tank. There isn't a, a, an issue with it at all, then we got some fuel on it. But the motor, it looks like Scott Dinger is going to be making another header. Bent the header up, bent the needle valve, and that's the last of the long needle valves I have. So sometimes it's a little, it's a little item like that that just makes you crazy. Oh, as I'm doing this, I see the, I see the A26 go by at appearance judging when it was intact. And you know, believe it or not, now we're in the middle of August already, and I never. I never got my concourse prop yet. It's actually down in Philadelphia. One of the guys from the Philly Club got it. So, anyway, this is uh, add my name to the list of people this year that have lost planes. Ted Fancher, of course. Paul Walker. Now me. Um, among other people, it's it's not a pleasant day. But uh, like when Ken Tyser crashed his plane at the Nats, and, and basically his was just a fly into the ground crash. Had I flown into the ground, I think it just would have wiped the whole plane out. But I'll take a couple of days off and think about this and come back to it. And, well, I'm not sure what we're going to do, but we're, we're certainly not going to give up. One of the things after a crash is always just look at the brightest side of all. We do have other planes. And I think, well, it's hard to say it right now. I think we will be able to, in some way, 
that we haven't seen the last flight of the A-26. Somewhere at some future time, I think it's going to fly again. Another reason why I love having a cowl mold, if we ever do fix it and get all the paint work done, and um, I'm not sure it would be worth doing all the cosmetic work, but it just gives you a lot of choices, but you always want to save the pieces, and I'll carefully save all these pieces. And then when it comes time to put this together, I'll try to make a what I think is the best decision possible. And thankfully, I have lots of video of it. I have lots of, uh, well, and winning the concourse, of course, was a nice, one of the nicest uh, things you can always do. And I have a lot of good memories of it when it was in, really, in one piece and, and like a brand new. And, of course, we've dedicated the plane to Father Regis Rhoda and co-pilot John Brodeck. So we, we hopefully are going to get to see it fly again at some future far off time. The thing that's good to do, and I just wanted to mention it, is I have some M600, and I'm going to take the whole model and try to get all the wax and grease off it as, as well as I can for uh, just sort of the oil or grease doesn't wind up getting in other things. And we've certainly learned a lot this year. Number one, the, the flap trim, some of the other things that uh, were significant. We're real happy with how these last set of carbon tanks worked out with the, a little bit of uh, upgrading that we did to them. The motor, we'll take the motor. Well, we're going to change the crankshaft in this motor anyway, so it doesn't sound like anything bad happened to this. But we'll test run it on the bench before we go any further and maybe try to get Scott Dinger to make us up a replacement header. I don't think we can bend that reasonably. But if you take each piece and just clean it off, we're going to put this away today. Come back and think about it later on in the week. Actually, they're funny. Not funny, but after looking this over, I actually have the parts of the motor mounts that I probably could put back. Probably could put those right back in place. Make some kind of a crutch. I don't know, that's going to take some take some thinking about what I want to do with that. Yeah, the header and needle valve are all bent too. But it's it's the life we've chosen and this is part of it. And if you if you have trouble with this part, maybe golf is the answer. It's all cleaned up and I'm going to put it away for today. Think about this tomorrow, the next day again. It's always the best not to do anything the day something like this happens because you're too emotionally involved. Just clean it up, put it away, and live to fight another day. What I did, I cleaned up the motor, made sure I don't have any problems with it. Took the header off, just took it out on our test bench outside and uh, let it run for a tank of fuel. So apparently there's no damage at all to the engine. And so this engine will be ready to replace the crankshaft and as soon as time permits, again I'm doing this piecemeal one, one day at a time, but I guess the first thing would be to establish that we have an engine because the, the only engine that we can run with a reverse crankshaft is the, the bar stock road jet. The, the, the mag jets don't have the availability or they have to be specially made of uh, reverse turning cranks. I don't know that they even are available. But for the time being, Rich Oliver and Bub, of course, have helped us with this project and we want to... I guess we could do it today, but we're just running out of time today. This is one of those long days that I guess I got to think about getting another header from Scott or modifying that one or seeing what's going to happen to that header. That's the next thing. Before I start gluing wood parts together, but we made these engines have been so good. This is one of the bright spots of this whole program. One of the, one of the really consistent parts of it has been these motors. Yeah, today I'm feeling, well, <laughs> a little less depressed. I really didn't sleep much last night thinking about it, what I want to do here. But 
there's there's a philosophy I have that that if you're doing this complex of a repair, you got to start somewhere, and you basically have to uh, even a long journey. You've got to start with one little thing. Now, what I decided to do, I tried to get Les to come over today, but he's busy. Didn't know if he could show up. Maybe he can. And I want to join this wing panel. Now, it won't be a structural joint, but it'll be more like just to get it in place so I can work on the alignment next. And what I, what I thought about doing was, and I know I can't do it, is doing this all in one step. Now, luckily, I have ink lines that'll line up that'll tell me when this is correct. Let me show this. This is pretty kind. This, this is the kind of thing. What I'll try to do is glue this edge and just let it sit. Then flip it over and glue, then pull it up and then glue this edge and try to get it to tuck in. I'm not sure I can get this all in one shot like I think I can. The problem is if I'm off on one side, it's really going to be a problem because we're going through double layers of tissue and fiberglass there. That was fiberglass out there. Now what I have is only the top joint. I want to make sure it's cured. Let the heat set it up a little while. Then I'll flip it over. Now what's great about having all these inclines is I can line up inclines. Yeah, that's, that's starting to set up nice. But I can still do this and get epoxy in there and then bring that down. And then obviously the next step is going to be to really put some fiberglass on this so that this is rigid. Maybe three layers of fiberglass on here. Boy, that really, see what happened? The impact probably was on this nacelle and it just tore it back. Whew. Now, you think of how stupid this is. If the bird had hit the nose, he probably just would have, it's a smooth, just not glanced off. He probably hit the prop, and the prop had such a shearing force, because there were feathers everywhere. It was, it was a disgusting mess. Oh. Okay, so we got half of this, not half, but one side of this done. Now I'm going to flip it. In fact, that's probably solid enough. I can flip it now, and then work the other side. It on the bottom, you can see it's just enough of a gap. I can get my epoxy down in there, and then what I'll try to do is get the inclines to all line up, maneuver it around, and hold it in place for 10 minutes or so. And get that lined up. Now, what what that's going to do at least is just giving. Now, you would think it might be easier to just take the wing out of the fuselage, but I decided if I do it this way, I can kind of look and see that things are lining up a little bit better. It just it's more of a convenience thing than anything else. The next step is going to be to get that bottom seam and then again one, what I try to do is get all of the mechanical parts of the repair done and then fly the plane before I spend any time sanding and painting and doing cosmetic work on this because a lot of times you do this the repair and then it breaks somewhere in here where you didn't see the crash where you didn't see the damage in here I don't know the foam wing looks like it looks like it just ripped and from hitting this it pushed the wing back it looks like that's the uh, the impact that it had oh boy what a mess boy if one time I don't have the video camera running too now I'm gonna mix up some epoxy and get it nice and thin so I can get it down in that crack and then when I push this up see if I had a helper I could do both sides at once but I try to always improvise in ways that I don't really need a helper and then before I do anything else I'm gonna glass this joint because I don't want to take any chance at all that while I'm working out here, I'm just going to have this fracture again. That looks like that's going to line up well. I have plenty of epoxy mixed here, a lot more than I'll need. I don't want to spread this anymore. And again, if you have a helper, it's nice, but it's always nice to know that you can do things with a minimum of help or no help at all sometimes. Oh, the first thing is just to load that up. This is the area where it's going to be most vulnerable up in the middle here. Now, let me get a clean towel. 
As I squeeze that, the epoxy will come out. Had I done this the day this happened, I would have been very frustrated. I would have been. I looked at it. I look at it too emotionally. And actually, what what hurt me the worst was knowing that I killed that bird. Looking at Chicky and thinking, uh oh, somewhere down the road that bird is going to be uh, asking for retribution. Okay, we're just going to let this. In fact, I'm going to hit this with a little bit of heat right now. to worry about burning the paint, that's for sure. And then the next step, and maybe I can even get this done today once this dries up, next step is definitely going to be get some fiberglass cloth over that. Maybe some half ounce cloth. And I can hold this up. Even though we're going to sand that, just get the extra goop off of it. Now the next step is this piece looks like we can get this in here the same way with a little bit of epoxy if we're lucky. We'll be able to fit that right in. You can see what it actually is. It's becoming a jigsaw puzzle. Then I'm going to look for this piece. The one by one by one, just get all these pieces in and then I want to try to glass this. Now one of the things I find is when you get to parts like this and you're doing what I'll call jigsaw puzzle work, Sometimes you get the parts to fit so tight you can't even see the seam. Sometimes they don't fit hardly at all. But you can't you can't get too concerned with it because this is all going to wind up getting glassed. It's all going to wind up getting repainted. And I thought of because I'm so good at doing <coughs> at doing this, and I don't want to be. One of the things I I realized I could probably do here is somewhere down the road put invasion stripes on this wing as a way of hiding this. Maybe we could think about doing that. First thing we want to get all these pieces in here. That piece is not going to really fit the way I want. I think this piece is going to have to go in. Oh boy, the day you have one of these, let's call them accidents, for lack of a better word. You really put your sense of humor to the test. Okay, so day one ends. We're going to let this dry before I do anything. Let all that epoxy harden up before we go on to the next step. Because now at least I have the thing in one piece. And I feel, yeah, it's a major thing there. Just having a wing. Well, Having a wing back on a plane is a major thing. But again, you always want to look for hidden cracks, and I see one in here, and I want to fiberglass that over. There's just no way you can ever predict it. And that way, that's why it's always a great idea to do all the engineering work like this, and when you're all done, and again, I was thinking of invasion stripes, or I could just take the wing out of the fuselage, and at some point in time refinish this whole panel. You can see it's 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 in rough shape. But if I was going to fly it like this, I'd put a little piece of scotch tape over each dent, just so it wouldn't be uh, oil would be getting in there. But I think everything will be better if I let this dry overnight. Now today I meticulously made a jigsaw puzzle out of putting this crutch back as much as I could. But some of the parts, boy it's not, doesn't take long and the phone starts ringing. Some of these parts are going to have to have doublers made for them. Let me get the phone. All of this, this is the next piece I got a jig. It's, it's just a jigsaw puzzle. I made two doublers on both sides of this so that what I want to be able to do, this is the, I want to be able to pick the whole plane up by this. This has to be rel relatively strong because the outer skin is really more cosmetic. So I've been making one piece at a time. This is the next piece, and I've got to fit this in. This is going to be a little tricky to fit in, but and that, that hopefully will give me the, uh, the other part of the motor crutch. And then I can start figuring out, well, I haven't glassed it yet, just that uh, 
I wanted to see all the structure. I wanted that to be good and solid before I get into any cosmetic stuff, even rough cosmetic stuff. And this one's really going to be tricky to fit in. I can see that. One thing I was happy with, and I'll put it, I'll make it part of the next design, is these carbon fiber reinforcements, or just make them out of plywood. That worked out pretty well. Again, it's one piece at a time. And every time I get one in there, looking around to see where I can reinforce it. In this case, the doubler isn't broken, but maybe I can get a reinforcement up to the top of the wing. And of course, then we'll put those little pieces of motor mount back in too. Well, little by little, last couple of days, we're getting piece by piece. Starting to give me a little, a little uh, positive outlook on this repair. Hey, but I'm liking birds less and less as this time is going by. Yeah, I saw that. Look at that. <laughs> ah, this could only happen to Wendy. Unbelievable. This is a reason it's so important not to lose any little parts. Even the smallest little part. Oh, here it is right here. A little piece like this can save can save an airplane, basically. Now, if you didn't have this part, believe me, you'd have to replace the whole motor mount. And in, in our case, we have a better way of fixing this. We're going to add to this thickness. Since we know the motor mount shim, we can glue the shim right in place over the motor mount and add some thickness that way. Add some integrity. Well, it's starting to shape up. We're going to be into this the third. It's going to be the third day of fooling around, but it's just a big jigsaw puzzle. Before we go any further, what I wanted to do is bolt the motor in place. In fact, I want to get the blind nuts in here. Line this up so I can use the motor itself as a guide. Now, with the engine bolted in place, that gives us some reference for our alignment. Now, that motor being in place is going to be a big help on some of the alignment issues that we have to deal with. That's actually had a great idea. He's going to try to stop by tomorrow to be of assistance, but in the meantime, he says, you know, over the winter, since we have templates for this wing, actually, we have a spare wing. One of the things we could do, we've wanted to make a wing with less dihedral. And maybe this will give us a chance because, again, one of the advantages of take apart planes, a big advantage, we can take this wing out, build another wing with two nacelles, and pretty much salvage all the time we have in the fuselage and knowing that we have a straight alignment of things that gives us another possibility and anytime you work through a repair like this you never know where the road is going to go like life in general you never know where the road is going to go but see this is all busted up in here we're going to make a new uh, part for in there I'm going to cut that all out make a new part and then start trying to fit these pieces around here and see how many we're missing I don't know how many we're missing, but it's it's a giant jigsaw, and it takes time. Every one of these parts takes some time. Having a motor in place now is hopefully going to give me some alignment. Like right here, I'm missing a piece, so I'm going to make a, a piece to connect that. I need to connect all the dots. And I'm not going to try to be too fussy about making it ultra, ultra, ultra light or anything. What I want to do is make sure it's strong so that we don't have another failure in this part of the plane, if possible. I'm going to stop making some of those doublers up today. In fact, we're running out of parts here. And then I will fly the plane before I do any cosmetic work at all on this. Any of the high-tech cosmetic work. Still haven't glassed it every day. I've been running out of things to, you know, with the email and the phone ringing and everything. It just, and I'm not trying to rush it. We're not getting it ready for anything. I don't think it's ever going to fly in a contest again. But I think, on the other hand, we're going to wind up with a serviceable twin-engine test plane somewhere in the near future.
if it ever flies again, when it flies again, when that landing gear break ground, there'll be a tear in my eye that we got it back into the air. But that's a long ways away. Of course, this next piece is really more cosmetic than anything. I'm just trying to get the pieces in shape. And boy, this is why you try to save every piece if you can. In fact, it's hard to get these to line up the way I want. And thank God for the inclines. The inclines allow you to get things lined up a lot better than if you didn't have inclines. just basic put the jigsaw puzzle back together you're not going to be able to salvage any of this finish I'm sure and I, any piece I can put in I can try to go around this now because I have this the motors holding that all together nice and solid so this is going to be a cosmetic shell piece here is going to be really challenging because it's first off it's really in rough shape but we're just trying to make a cosmetic shell here not trying to do anything that's going to amount to structure here let's see if this can hook on I doubt it now one of the one of the ways that you can get this whoops to fit is is just get a little tack on it first. Again, if you have a helper, that's really neat. Try to line up. In this case, we did not get the ink line lined up, but it really doesn't matter. There's going to be so much sanding and filling here, I don't even think it's important. Now try to go back up in here where it it really is going to be a point we have to attach. And take a, either a Q-tip or a paper towel and just let that attach itself. Now, if this plane were really heavy, it really wouldn't probably if the B-25 crashes, I doubt we'll ever try to fix it because it's already too heavy. But this plane, I think, could stand the extra weight. And again, the more I think about Les's idea of making a uh, making a wing with less dihedral, just so we could unbolt one wing and put the other one in, might be a might be a productive thing to do. I'm not sure if we still have the core. I think Mike has both of the other cores. But we can get more cores. That's not a problem. But that would be an interesting test. And basically, that would take all the repair out of the plane. Now, can you imagine if you could win the concourse with a plane that you made a new wing for? That's yeah, really what I get up in the morning to try to do. Try to invent these things. Life's hard enough. You don't have to invent these challenges. Anyway, we're coming up on having some more of this. Every time we add a piece, it just looks a little better. A little more like... Mm. But remember, this is... I've heard of people, I, I haven't done it in a while, but I've heard of people that have done all the cosmetic work and a hundred hours of cosmetic work to get a plane that was repaired only to find out that something inside the plane had broken and or folded or something. And so we want to, before we do any cosmetic repair, make this structurally okay. For sure structurally okay. Take it out and fly it on the windiest day possible. Put it through some really rough uh, landings and whatever. 
before I devote any time to doing any further repair on it. But little by little, one step at a time, it's going back together. It's just taking time. This is going to be the next piece. Again, looking at the inclines, but I know the one, the original ones are not that good to begin with. Yeah, we're not going to get the inclines line. Yep, yeah, maybe. What a miracle. Actually, we're going to do this one starting in by the fillet. Now, this part of the repair, we don't have to be too fancy, believe it or not. Once this is sanded out, all of these joints will sand right out. And the glassing is done. I was going to glass the wing the other day, and I just ran out of time, but I've been trying to work on this a couple hours every night. So our counter-rotating prop thing turns into an adventure. God. Now, luckily, from this point, I can turn this over and run some glue inside, firm this up, which would be nice, because we're not going to have, some of the formers are not going to be, I don't have them anyway. I mean, they pulverized. I can get in here and just get glue to run down on the skins, strengthen up some of these repair joints that I had to make. Now, if we could only find this piece, I think we are missing one piece. That's going to be a problem, but we're going to start working. Always work from the edges, just like you're putting a puzzle together. Work from the edges to the middle. I know by now uh, you're probably amazed that this is back in one piece. <laughs> I'm amazed. This piece obviously is destined to go back here. However, it's already broken, so what we can do here is, see how that's broken? We can repair that before we put the piece back. I know I'm always amazed, and I know a lot of people are, of just what's, what's possible in a repair, especially when you think of the alternatives. It's like, uh, it's like chemotherapy, kind of, that, well, it isn't fun, but the alternative is, is you're dead. And we would really love to see this, even if it's just a test plane, because there's actually, there's a lot of good memories locked up in this plane, you know, and these planes, they're like little people to me, like little entities or children or whatever they are. And maybe we will treat him to a new wing over the winter. Maybe it, maybe at these last couple days I've been so depressed. Maybe I shouldn't be so depressed. A piece like this that's in two pieces and you've got the silk span holding it, you can kind of hold it together. It just makes the repair. Once that kicks, now you have one piece to glue in instead of a myriad of pieces. Well, you, an ink line gives you a clue as to where if something goes. This I don't have a clue. I'm clueless where this where this actually should go. But I guess we should just move on to some other part. Because be believe me, the parts that we're missing, it's going to be a lot of work remanufacturing them. So we'll save this until we find out. We'll figure out where it goes. And this gives you a tip. This piece was glued on to there. So you would hope, if all else fails, you could get this piece in there. And I can see we're going to be missing a piece. Oh, if you only knew how I hate missing pieces. Whenever you crash, pick up the pieces. Spend as much time, even if you get little, like that little piece is probably going to take me an hour to make later. Anytime you can get behind something and get some glue on the inside. Now I'll try to hold this up on its tail and shoot, get some glue in there. But 
once we start sanding, then all the high spots are going to come up, and we'll still have a lot of work. But sometimes just missing one little piece like that can ruin your whole day. Okay, now, now to find a piece that goes in here. Can you believe this? Looks like this might be the piece. Lucky me. Now this is going to be tricky because I want to get this. I'm going to spend a little time lining this up. You can see it's thank God for fiberglass. Okay, it looks like we can get that joint. all the hours I put buffing this out and polishing it and waxing it and here I am ah uh, birds okay this is the last joint up here now we got to start looking for some of the pieces that are missing then the hard part comes the parts that you don't have a part for that's when it starts getting to be a challenge. And we are missing, believe it or not, well this really exploded in midair. I don't know where half of the pieces even wound up. And I spent so much time looking for them. But we are still missing some, as you can see, so. And what else do we have left here? Here's where you go crazy now, trying to figure out where this part goes. Down in here, nope, no shading on it, it can't go there. Mystery part. And we know this piece goes here because it has the tank vent on it. And I see we're missing a piece there, oh man. This is going to be a pain. And I'm going to have to get behind this. Oh, I can pull it up this way. And sometimes you just have to settle for getting it close. I'm using some air epoxy light or something there as a filler. Well, if we were missing that piece, we had that piece. Unfortunately, we're running out of parts and, and we're not running out of things that have to be fixed. So I think what I'm going to do is tomorrow, because it's really getting late here, tomorrow I'm going to uh, demonstrate my amazing way of making plugs or corks to fill in the gaps. But of course, remember, anytime you have a part, you don't have to fill it in. So we are still missing a few. This phone is ringing all day. I can't believe it. Anyway, that's about all we're going to get done today. And tomorrow we're going to start doing the corks. That. Yeah, and there are parts missing. For, and this one, e even a little part like this that, that holds the... Uh, oh, man. This is this is one of the, the parts that holds the uh, cowling. Here's the other one. Which one this is? This gets more complicated by the minute. Like getting the last couple, see, even little pieces like this I've saved, but you know, unfortunately there's a reality here. We have a lot of plugs left, and I'm gonna just finish this up tonight, and tomorrow, again, I'll just do, I'll show the way that I, in the past, have done plugs, uh, because it's almost always on a repair like this, you almost always have to have plugs. May as well demonstrate it anyway. I will pick this up tomorrow. But today I have a rare opportunity to spend a good part of the day here. What I'm going to try to do today is fill in all these with new pieces of wood.
you can see, and I, I have carefully tried to evaluate how many pieces I need about 10 pieces all together. So it doesn't really matter where I start, I'm just going to start at any given part here and start making up replacement pieces of wood. It looks like our joint here that, that was the, the crack in the wing and the crack in the nacelle. That looks like that all panned out pretty well. Now the only thing I'm still concerned with is making these parts. Now what I do when I make a piece like this, for instance, is make a cork. Put a reverse curve on this, just like a cork in a bottle, and then make a plug and shove it in there and then sand it smooth. And all of this is going to be very, very labor intensive. But one of the plans I had, and I guess it's in, in talking to Les who always has some good ideas, is over the winter, I'm going to try to make this this wing good enough that I can use it to test my test this bird. You know, that's exactly what happened to the other chickadoolie flying into the plane. What I'm going to try to do is make a just a repair that's cosmetically neat and clean. I probably won't even make another cowling for this because I want to use this to test those counter rotating props which will become part of the tiger cat plan and of course this this actually is the beginning of the tiger cat I, this is a hell of a beginning for a tiger cat but this is the beginning yeah make a nest in there go ahead chicky but one of the things that that, that i'm getting from this is i want to make another wing now i i really want to make a wing with less or no dihedral and that's one of the things i can do because we're going to be laying out templates for the tiger cat and probably because this way, because I have this really nice and light tail fuselage and all the work that went into that, making a wing in nacelles would probably be about the same amount of time as building a, a typical stunt ship. But then I'll have a plug-in wing with no dihedral and a plug-in wing with dihedral if that plan comes to fruition. And I can kind of look at it and say, gee, what's the penalty I'm paying for having dihedral? And what's the benefit of having no dihedral? And in this case, because the plane came out very light, I could even make it an inch or two less in span, get away with that. That would make the plane a lot less um, cumbersome looking in the pattern, maybe make it a little more palatable in the pattern. But anyway, just some thoughts. In the meantime, I'm going to go get my sanding blocks and some scrap pieces of wood. In fact, we already have some scrap pieces of wood there and start cutting up and making plugs to fill some of these gaps. And hopefully by the end of the day we'll have these gaps all filled in and we can start sanding these areas down. Now, it's a significant thing to me just to have the plane in one piece again. Because it really is a heartbreaker for me. I mean, I'm sure everybody can relate to this. It's a heartbreaker when something that you've worked this many hours on takes a beating. I've learned in my life anyway, every time there's a tragedy, I try to just make the most out of the parts that I have left over. And as an example, the, the Miss Ashley, when it crashed, I wound up learning from that and making a carbon fiber wing for the other wood body I had, which became the second Miss Ashley. So from this, it could be that at the end of this year, we'll have a plane with interchangeable wings, one with dihedral and a little more span, one with less dihedral or no dihedral. We, we have a couple of choices. It isn't all bad and no good, but to get in that mental position where you can look at something like this from a positive point of view, it took me a few days, but I'm ready to go to work now. Now I'm mad and I'm ready to go to work. I'm going to start from some given point. This part here certainly could use a patch. So what I'm going to do is get a brand new blade and try to razor this out with some reverse curves and then make a little balsa block that will fit right in there. Now what I did, because this block was, was pretty well beaten up, I just glued the block in. So I have a no removable one landing gear will not come out anymore. Maybe a little handicap, but by the time I got in there, I just figured this would reinforce it too and make it a little bit stronger. I sure wouldn't want this to, ha to come out in flight or something. It will be one of the weak parts. Now what I did at the end of yesterday, I got in there, I laid this down so it was facing with the tail down and just poured CA in here and let it just drip back into this area from the inside. So this is kind of solid, but there still are some weak parts. And then I'm going to have to get up here and make a patch. 
You can see back here I'm going to have to make a patch. So I'll do one of these on camera. I'll get this piece made up first. And, and all the little pieces that go in. It's easier to get all the little patches made in, get a skin of thick CA on them, and then this whole, I guess I could work on the whole nacelle at one piece. That would be the, uh, well, looking around here, this has to be dressed in. There's a lot of little pieces to fill in. So the first thing is to get, at least for me, is to get all this old wood out of here. What I want to create is a reverse angle, to some degree anyway. And I want this to stiffen this part up, so. Piece of scrap up. And we can get a nice press fit in there, actually. Now what I can do is, of course I don't have an appropriate tool here, so now we can make just an oversized piece here. Now the reason I don't want to make this whole thing in one piece is I want this to stiffen up the gear block, so that's the piece I have to carve out. And I think that'll, once that's in place, that'll stiffen that up real well. Now it's just a question of and this gets real sloppy in the beginning but see this will stiffen up the block, it'll stiffen up this, give me some material here. After all this I don't want the gear blocks to come out. Now that's in there good and solid. Now I can dress it off. Leave a little extra on there so when I block sand it in. Okay, now there was no reason in a, in a piece like this, there's no reason to try to get all these little areas at once. Now I can do the same thing, and I'll do it off camera. Make a little plug for here, 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 and then this area will be ready to work on once I get these three other little plugs in. The thing that's real critical here is fill in the gap. You don't have to make fancy joints. And use real punk soft wood. It just conforms to the shape better. In that case, that'll stick right in there. And it can all be brought in, but just fill in the gaps one by one. What I've done in the past is try to be real fancy and pre-hollow things out, and it never paid. It always pays to do it this way, I think. Think. Well, we'll find out when this is done. And you don't want to have any area that you're not getting glue on. Now, this will complete this once this dries up. Then I can start shaving and sanding. It doesn't have to be any fancier than this. Even this, you can take and shave some of this down. Until we get it down to where it's appropriate to do it with a sanding block. Of course, you could pre-cut these parts. You could be a little fancier and cuter. But I've never found being cute and fancy in a repair to be worth it. Just pays to get it filled in, and then if you're going to spend an extra couple of hours, spend it on the cosmetic sand outs. Doing these little parts, you just basically fill in holes with corks. Just like a cork. I should say cork, not cork. See, cork would be what you say if you live in Jersey, like toil. You're watching too many soprano issues here. Okay, we got that almost down flat now. Now once that's down in place, I just make sure I have a good bond up. And once this is all rough then, and 
I can move to the smooth side of the carbide block. Now, next thing is to find the right piece of sandpaper and the right block that I can get into this area nice and smooth. And the right block sometimes is a little difficult. I just want to get in there. Again, I'm not trying to make this ultra fancy right now, rather make it as strong as I can. And because I have about eight or ten of these to do, I'd like to get them all done today if I can. Now, once it's to that point, and this is the trick. Now, I'll probably only do this once on video, just so you can see. Okay, now that's, that's about as smooth as I'm going to bother trying to make that. But now the trick is, get a clean paper towel, some thick CA. Don't get too cute with it. This just hardens up the wood so that the next time you sand it, the wood will be as hard as the paint and you can make it smooth. And this is the trick that's worth, worth its weight in uh, banana peels. Now since having this accident, I've got literally hundreds of people calling and emailing me and wishing me well and saying what a jerk I am and everything in between, but Let's, let's really hope that I can get this, I can pull this one off, and that at some point in time, we're going to see this guy fly again. Let's hope. But again, this is a cosmetic thing here. This is not a, a structure. When we do the wing joint, that's a structure. And I'm doing this just as a cosmetic exercise. So I can show a demo of how I would go about doing some of these other pieces. Because if there's anybody around that's gone through a lifetime of doing this, 40, 50 years like I have, and not crashed a plane, hit a bird, or flown into the ground, or had a bell crank come out, or something. As Gilda Radner used to say, there's always something. Now once you get that sanded where it's, it's kind of smooth to the touch, you would think the next step would be, and it is, more CA. And I'll use probably three or four big tubes of CA on this repair, but that's the trick right there, is to get that wood hard. Now we could sand it with maybe some 400 or whatever, get that blended in. It also does another thing, it fuel proofs everything, so while we're test flying this, before we actually do the paint work, we don't have oil soaking into the wood. And then at some point in time, even if we build another wing for this plane, we want to have this wing. We don't want to throw this away. Now that repair there, that's about ready. We're going to do the same thing up here to these areas. These just need to be sanded. The thick CA around, sand them several times. We'll make a plug for back here, same way. No difference, just cut, cut this out and make a plug. Over here you can see we're going to need quite a bit of work, probably some, some air epoxy light ultimately. And anything that needs a cosmetic fill, we'll try to use air epoxy light, but most of it is going to be just a repeat of what we've done right there. Fill it in with a cork, sand it, grind it level, and then in the course of four, five, six coats of thick CA, sand each one in. One spot, I put a little bit of that, uh, nitrous stain on there so I can start getting those very light coats, one coat at a time is better than trying to put them all on at once. In an area like this, it's better to clean off all the edges and then just take a piece of old scrap and make the same thing, make a cork. And this is just the, the cork that's going to go in there. Once I glue that in and sand it smooth, I'll do the red lead and I'll have this part of the nacelle hopefully finished and then I can move on to the front part of it. That's ready for a final sand out. 
don't know what I'm doing up here. I want to, and this area is almost ready for some primer. As, I, as I'm working each area, I go back. Each time I would put the nitrous stain on this area, wet sand this out, some M600 and some 600 sandpaper, so that one by one I'm getting these areas prepped and this one will dry now. Now, while this one is drying, and that looks like it's going to be okay, while that's drying, I'm going to make up a patch for this, same way, make up a patch for this, and start working this area. And again, most of this is just redundant. It's the same thing over and over and over, and it's just labor. There's just a lot of hours of stuff going on here. Now, it's always better to do this in thin layers. I put a layer on about every 15 minutes or so. This is about the third or fourth layer. Use a rubber block until you have it smooth. Now, while we were working on the front, this was drying. So I can get another layer on this now. And eventually you'll just have the little part that you filled in. Thin layers, sand each layer with a block. Eventually you'll get relatively nice smooth skin. And then this will be ready for a coat of primer. Area you sand it in, and now the next thing is to straighten this piece out and put a plug right in there. Oh, little by little, it's coming along. And I just wound up filling this, and you can see we're just scrap pieces. Once that's done, then I'm going to work the other side. This side's looking almost complete, and we're going to work our way over to that side. When you do a job like this, it's good to work from one end to the other or in some predictable pattern, whether it's back to back, side to side. In this case, I wanted to do all the bottom of an A cell, flip it over, clean up the mess we got on the floor, and that'll probably be it for today. If I can get the bottom done today and tomorrow I get the top done, we're ready to start painting it by the weekend. Well, we did get all the woodwork done on here, and I'm, what I'm going to do is just put the last coat of the uh, nitrous stain on here. I'm going to let this dry overnight. And tomorrow, come back and flip it over and do the top. Well, this has been uh, <laughs> quite an exciting day, to say the least. Quite an exciting day. So we are making some progress. Well, on the last day, we've really made some real progress. And it's always best if you can let this sit overnight, which we're going to do. And we'll come back tomorrow, and like I said, we're going to flip this over and look at it from a lot of different angles. This will be ready to wet sand out. Actually, that side will be ready to prime. And then we're going to do the last part. The last thing will be the structural joint. This is going to be a structural joint. And we, I wanted to wait to the last minute to do that just to see if this was going to be any, going to come apart or be weak in any way. And then I would re glue it before I put that extra layer of fiberglass or whatever I'm going to do there. I haven't really decided yet how to figure out how to do that. And I'm going to let all this cosmetic stuff go. Just put tape over the bottom of the wing. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that outboard wing. Because I really do want to get this back in the air before the, uh, the flying season ends. that much of the repair done, Chicky has a place to perch at night. <laughs> anyway, we'll be back on working on this tomorrow. This morning, I know this is a, a coincidence even I can't believe. Bob Zambelli called this morning. He hit a bird over the weekend. Didn't hurt the bird. Hit him with the flying line. Hey! 
Can't even start a day off here. Anyway, what I did, come on, get out of here. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do the top of this. And I'm going to spend probably the better part of the day. I have to make, look at this bird. You want, somebody's going to hit you. I have to make some parts here and then I have to put the engine back in, make sure I haven't moved any of the alignment. I've been filling inside here. I took a brush and some fiberglass resin and got some inside some of these crap. Let me show this up, up close. Now today's job, I'm going to make these parts up. And this will be pretty simple. It doesn't even warrant putting a lot of it on video. Make all these little replacement parts and then sand out all these cracks. And my goal would be today to try to get the whole nacelle final sanded. And then either late at the last thing of the day or tomorrow, the structural part of the crack of the wing. And I guess at the end of those days, we'd be pretty much ready to figure out how much time we want to put into cosmetics here before we can get back out and fly it and possibly make up another cow. I'm not real worried about having this because this will be the engine where the, the props rotate in this direction. And really the whole reason for doing this and for doing it as quick as I am, otherwise I just would have put this away for a winter day, is because we still have some flying season left. And I still want to work on those, the whole idea of this. This was going to be a dedicated video for counter-rotating props. It turns out to be a dedicated video for uh, repairing the plane, one way or another. One thing that may be a, a good tip, while I'm working on this on the table, since I'm going to be working on this nacelle, I want this solid. And in the past, what I've done is, without having these little blocks that I keep, just to keep it from rolling off the table, I wind up taping them down, because I'm going to be doing a lot of heavy carving and sanding and working on that part. But those little, that's a good little trick. That's a good little trick you might even want to use on, in some other application. Yeah, but every day it gets a little bit more like, well, you can imagine, the day this happens, you know, you well, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so between me and Zambel, I heard Bob Whiteley hit a plane two years ago, and he hit it with a twin-engine plane that destroyed the plane. I remember right that was in uh, one of the old stunt newses. Anyway, gonna, we got to get busy here. We got to fill in all these gaps. It's only a matter of time now. Getting this, we're, we're closing in on having these nacelles finished. I hope by the end of this day, we'll have these all sanded out. It's coming little by little. It would go a lot quicker if this bird would go somewhere else, like he'd just dying to get on camera. Yeah, yeah, birds. You'd think, you'd think I'd be immune, being I'm so nice to this bird, I'd be immune. Or maybe it's the revenge of Chicky, I don't know. Chicky's revenge. A couple of things that I ran into where I, whenever I find a slight crack, which I did right in the fillet area here, what I do is I sand it and then just run a bead of some, some thin CA in here, just to try to harden up the wood. In fact, we can put a double bead in there. Now, so far, all the woodwork here is basically done. We're going to start working on that joint. I want to get this, the nitrous stain on here. There's a couple, a couple more little spots. Actually, the worst part of this was making up these little plugs. It just takes time, though. It's a lot of hours. And I've used one, two, three, four, five five tubes of CA already, five uh, things, in making a skin, hardening up the bowl, so making a skin. But the only other choice would be to put a hundred coats of dope back on here, and that, that would just take forever, and we lose some of the thing that we're trying to accomplish. And the more I think about having that second wing for this plane, just one more reason to make take apart planes. If this were a one-piece plane, not an option. 
or in Kent Tyser's case, he's been thinking about it, and we've been talking about it, just cutting a fuselage off the Strega that he fixed at the Nats on the Nats videos. Even though he fixed it, he's looking to make a brand new body. We'll, we'll see in days to come if how that works out for him. But we're ready for the, we're actually ready for the nitro stain right now. Actually, this is all we're going to get done today. But we'll get a nice early start tomorrow on working on that wing joint. And it'll be best if this can all dry overnight, of course. Usually it only takes about 15 minutes to dry, but if you let it dry overnight, it's even better. Now, I don't like, the, believe me, you never want to use this to make a fillet or to make anything structural, but in these little cosmetic flaws, of which there are many, this will save us. Get one over here that's bad. Thin layers, let each layer dry out thoroughly before you even sand it. It's your best shot at getting it nice with a minimum amount of work. Always feel the little areas with your bare hands. See, I don't want to get any in the fillet if I can help it. This is not structural material. If you make a fillet with this, you almost guarantee you're going to be sorry that you made it. All right, so if this dries up tonight, Tomorrow we'll be ready to start a structural repair. And best, of course, to always sand this with M600, and 600 paper is good. Getting excited that this is back in one piece. My baby, my poor baby. Spent a lot of hours making this thing. And no more flying into birds. But just imagine if you were motorcycle racing now. I always think of that for some reason. Oh yeah, we had a little accident. Hit a bird at 190 miles an hour. Took my head off. Alright, we'll come back and work on this tomorrow. And do that structural joint. Actually, I, I really feel like we're making some progress here. I don't know if you can share the adventure via video or not. Anyway, this Tiger Cat project has started off. The first Tiger Cat tape, and we've got a major repair. We haven't even cut apart for the Tiger Cat yet. Amazing, amazing turns in the road. What I want to do, I want to put this joint on here. I want to rough up the paint. This is some 80 year paper here. Rough it up. Put a coat of thick CA on. That'll act as the binder. I want to get right up into the fillet on both sides. And then make up a patch. A fiberglass patch for this whole panel. Again, you can't fiberglass over something shiny and bright. Anytime you're using fiberglass, you want it to be rough. Minimum 80 grit paper, so you have some scratches. So the epoxy can get down in there. In any spot, in fact, we got a spot right there. And get rid of all the bad spots. I'm going to do the bottom first so I can get my a feel for what technique I want to use here. Remember, this is a structural joint. This is not an appearance joint. We'll worry about the appearance thing at some future day. Right now, I hopefully will make this strong enough. And I'm going to put 
piece of half ounce cloth and then where the high point of the wing is maybe a couple of extra little strips just to reinforce it. We want to lay out get a piece big enough for this. Again, I want to cut all the cloth ahead of time. In fact, what I'm going to do is sand the whole top of the wing, too. The idea being that I can do all the glassing in one operation. Get the pieces made up, get the extra little pieces made up. Okay, so I have a little pattern now. Now what I can do is go to the top. I'm going to flip this over, do the top of the wing the same way, and then try to do this whole glassing in one operation. The time on doing this kind of repair, and you get down through into bare wood, I want to seal this up. The thin CA will harden up the wood, then we'll put a couple of coats, maybe five coats of thick CA on here and sand each coat. I don't want to have raw wood just with nothing holding it or hardening it up. What's nice about using this system, it goes really quickly and it gives a nice hard, the wood is nice and hard when it comes time to put the fiberglass down. Right, we're almost ready for the fiberglass. I want to make sure that's flat because otherwise I have a high spot. When I do the finished part of it, it'll go right through and then I'll have more of a problem. resin worked in. I'm just going to back mask everything. I'm going to paint the resin on here. West 105 with the slow hardener. This is going to dry overnight. What I want to do is I want to see if I get any fish eyes. Now I've carefully cleaned this with M600. Looks clean. But if I were to see any any fish eyes, I'd want to wipe this again. Maybe even resand it. So far, so good. Again, remember this is a structure joint. This is not a a cosmetic thing. Try to do this in one shot, flip it over, do the top. But every step we get closer to getting it back in the air, and that's the whole purpose of doing this. This is our Tiger Cat test plane now. this too fancy this is going to get sanded out possibly even double or triple tissued but of course it's nice if you can get as many of the wrinkles out as possible even had another idea. I mean, we were talking over many ideas on the phone of turning this into a total test plane. 
and using this wing, just making a profile body. The other thing that happened is Mike Costello called. Of course, his A26 isn't even close to being this far along, and he was thinking maybe I'd just give him this wing. Well, maybe I will. <laughs> Depends. So we got a lot of choices. The point is, from a, a real disastrous thing, we've managed to make, I think, the best of the situation. Now, because what I want to do here, I want to put on the high point, strip right down the middle so we don't get a stress riser. And I'm not trying to squeegee out every little bit of resin here because I'm going to sand this down. I would just rather get a good bond if it's possible. we always have the possibility at some point down the road of having an extra wing and just molding up an extra body and making a tail. We've got a lot of choices here. Alright, so I'm just going to leave this. I'm going to flip it over, do the top. Man, we can do that off camera, in fact. We'll have, the, we'll have this whole thing dry in tonight. Well, once that's all dried up, tomorrow that will be ready to sand out. And Start doing some more of the, uh, maybe we'll even get it up to the uh, prime tomorrow. Well, one of the bright spots of doing this repair the last two or three days, this is what it's been looking like. We haven't even missed one flying day. The lightning and storming and raining. Uh, listen to that thunder. Ooh. Guess we're not missing a thing. Now today it's always nice to take a little test of when you're going to sand any resin, especially west resin. Just take a little test from in the area and I left the back masking on there. But once you see the powder coming up, you know it's going to be perfectly all right to sand this down. Now if you're using hobby resin, a lot of times it doesn't powder right off. It gets difficult to sand. It gets chewing gummy, soft. West Systems resin doesn't do that. In fact, if you look at this real close, you can see just how quick this, I'm going to show this on a close-up lens, how quick this powders off. Just powders right off. And I try to just candle this as I'm going along. Sand in any fiberglass. I don't want to go down into the cloth. I purposely left a little bit extra on here so I'd have material to sand through. And my job today, and I, I'm hoping I'm going to get done, is to get 
this whole side, well, the top and the bottom, all sanded out and get ready for the priming. The last thing here, I want to sand out any of the little spots like up here and there's some spots I got a back mask and hopefully get a uh, well I was gonna originally prime this but I'm wondering if I can just shoot silver on it since we're not looking to do a concourse finish it's funny when you have a concourse winner you don't have to worry about doing a concourse finish there's something wrong with that I'm not sure I know what I'm th I think what I'm gonna do is try to shoot silver right on top of this put a little talc in it and just use it for uh, basically for silver filler. I guess we'll find out if that's going to work. And then the biggest challenge is going to be I thought about maybe even trying to repair the old cow or make a new one. Haven't decided yet. Yeah, because they're predicting, actually they're predicting five days of rain. We're getting some storms coming up from the, the coast. What I decided to do, rather than rush this, I was going to try to rush this, because again, I'm trying to get some flying time for my tiger cat. I decided I'll spend probably the rest of this day, or most of the day, just cleaning this area up. In case we want to ultimately use this, which you never know we're going to use it, or we don't know, because if I don't test fly this, and if it if it doesn't you know break when you test fly it, well then everything's cool. But to spend it, it probably would be legitimate a hundred hours of time, and in a hundred hours and have this all done, then you test fly it and it falls. Well, but the alternative is I got five days of rain looking at me, or five days of bad weather. So I may as well put some of the time into this. So what I've decided to do is just spend a little time tonight, get this done. Maybe even get several more coats of this on and block sand it off. And then I want to decide, I want to make a real decision how I want to do the finish. Do I want to just finish this with uh, some silver with talc filler or some primer or what? I'm not sure. Again, I got a lot of decisions and the rain is making these decisions even easier. Well, what I decided to do, because again, because of the weather more than anything else, I was going to paint right up to this wing and then leave this bottom. It's really only the bottom of the wing that's damaged. The top is pretty, uh, pretty clean. But what I did, I masked off everything that doesn't have to be repainted. In fact, I'm looking at this star, and probably rather than remasking the whole star, I'm just going to live with that little dent there. I'll mask him off, and the tip weight box. This out here I can bondo up with. I'm just going to mix up some bondo because who cares about the weight? We'll just take that tip weight out. So one of the things that makes this a practical repair is virtually, and you can see, all the damage was confined to from the fuselage out on the outer wing where it's, it's the least of a problem, lesser of a problem anyway. Anyway, we have just sanded away at this for endlessly. But it's still going to need a coat of some kind of primer, some kind of filler, and I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with that yet. But the next step, and it's changing day by day as a job like this does. It changes as the job unfolds. To fill in these dents right now, because of the rain, because of the terrible weather, I may as well do all this at once. Now, Aero Epoxy Light would have been... Uh, a better choice, but we would have had to wait overnight, and I don't want to wait overnight. I want to sand this out and get the second and third coat on. Again, with Bondo, the trick is put it on in thin coats. Don't try to put it on in a lump. Put all these thin coats. Once this dries up, we're going to sand that out. See if it needs a second or third coat. Put a little nitro stain on if we have to. And all of the parts that are not masked off will be ready for some kind of either silver primer or whatever kind of primer we're going to ultimately use on it. And we're going to have to do it out in the garage if it's still raining. Once this hardens up, one of the things I'm going to try to do is I want to see if I can salvage that cowling and make some 
some pieces for it. I'm not sure I can do that. Anyway, this Bondo, you can see it's still a little soft. I mean, I'm just going to let it cure out. If it doesn't powder off, see, I'm rushing things now. If it doesn't powder off, you're really not making any progress. But when it, good thing to put on the tape, when you see it like this, you know that's going to be a problem. That's going to be, it just hasn't hardened up yet. And if it hasn't hardened up yet, you're just wasting your time. So we'll let this sit. I gotta go work on a cowling for a while. While we can let this sit up just a little bit more. Because I was missing a piece on the cowl, I'm, I'm missing a piece. I took some carbon fiber and wound it in there. Actually, what I really should do at some future time is just make a new cowling. I think I have some already molded up, but what, I, what I'll get by this is to just get this in the air a little bit quicker if I can get this to just be a functional cowl. And again, the plan is that we're going to make a wing for this plane for all new nacelles and everything anyway, so I don't... The, I'm trying to walk a fine line between not spending too much time on this and getting out to the field to test those counter props because what I'm really looking to do is get the Tiger Cat started. This is really just a learning experience. Example, if you don't wait for Bondo to dry because it's polyester resin, what you're looking for is that it just powders off. If it doesn't powder off, some of the possibilities are that it's too old, you didn't mix it right, or that you're just like me, just impatient, I want to get moving, I want to get some paint on this today. But that's the way Bondo should come off. And because most of this weight is right out near the tip weight box, I don't even care if we leave a lot on. I'm just looking, just looking to try to get a nice finish on this. Or as nice as possible within the time window I'm going to allocate to this. Because if it takes me longer to do this than to build a new wing, well then I haven't, I've won the battle but lost the war. I'm trying to allocate a reasonable amount of time to this. And as if this wasn't ironic enough, what came in the mail today or yesterday, all my pusher APC props. I got match sets of pusher and puller 11 and 10s. Nice match set. So we want to get that stuff tested, and that's that's the primary reason I'm putting a little bit of a push on this. Well, I hope we're closing in on having the last, uh, well, the last coat of what's going to happen here. So I want to get this final sanded, and I want to get some paint on it today if I can. But this is the part where you really have to be patient. You just have to do it over and over and over again. I mean, as opposed to, if we really did this right, we'd strip it down to bare wood, but we'd be talking about hundreds of hours then. Where this is just not going to be that many hours, I think we're going to basically meet our goal of having a salvageable test plane when we're done. Believe it or not, luck is on our side. We finally got the. Uh, I just see a mistake already. Oh man! We've been waiting patiently for a day. It's not raining, and they said no rain today. <laughs> but it sure looks like it's going to rain. Anyway, what I decided to do is wait. Get a coat of primer on this. Primer. This is an excellent use for it. This is what it's really designed for. It'll hopefully seal what's underneath it. You may or may not have to sand this out. Again, until the model is test flown, I'm not going to feel like, you know, you never know if any of the parts inside are broken or damaged that you can't see, like when they do an auto body job, hidden damage. 
Anyway, you only need a light coat of the primer. You don't need a big, thick, heavy coat. and flip it over on a pillow. A lot of times you can get away with just one or two coats of primer. <laughs> but nothing beats if you sand it out a few times. This will do, this will show me any of the spots that still need to be worked on. Along the edges, it's always good to get some extra. Now, if the sun just stays with it, if I can keep this out of the sun, I think I should move the table a little bit. <laughs> Look at this, do you believe this? Yeah. It's hell wait. Look at this. Alright, so it's up like that. Believe me, I'm not gonna be walking away from it. Now once that dries we'll flip it and bring it downstairs and sand it down with some twelve hundred. Okay, we're back to filling in some more little dents. Once that's done, we're going to be ready to sand this coat of primer out 1200. And if you've never used Brodak primer for this kind of a repair, it just, once it's dry a couple hours, it just sands out like butter. It's really a nice material to use for mold making or for priming fiberglass or for this kind of stuff. Or even, I guess if you weren't super concerned about the weight, it's even a good base coat for a finish. out. I like to use 1200. Once it's dry it doesn't take a whole lot. As soon as you see the, the undercoats coming through you're basically done. So it's not real labor intensive to sand it out. And if in doubt it's better to put on two or three thin coats than one thick coat. Again because we're trying to keep this finish to a minimum. We don't want to turn this into a 500 hour project. As soon as we see the underlayment coming through, and you can see all the little spots where it's been repaired, they all come popping through the primer. And if we're lucky and it doesn't rain this afternoon, we may even get the silver on this today. That'll be nice to get that first coat of silver on. Okay, we're ready to put the first coat of silver on there. What I'm going to do though is any spot where the primer is through, in a spot like this where we're working on a little rough area, I'm going to take that area and just reprime it, let it dry for 10 minutes, and then shoot the silver on it. I don't want, rather than recoat the whole thing down here, I got a spot where it's a little rough. We want to take advantage of this day because we're predicting more rain with the weather but there's a lot of breeze blowing so what I want to do is I just want to touch up just the spot I made this a little thinner than it was I just want to cover everything so we have one coat of primer on everything
goals is Midgley's contest is coming up next weekend. All the paint can be drying while we're up at that contest, assuming we can get this done by then. But one thing we're not going to do is rush it. We get some on the edges. Doesn't matter how much is on the outer tip. You can see the breeze blowing. That's why I have to be careful here. Don't go away. Trying to get a look at what this is going to look like when we have the B25 silver on there. Our next coat will be once this dries up. I think that's going to be fine. Now, when this dries up and we'll let this dry overnight, we'll make a, uh, a concerted decision. We want to sand this coat of silver out which you probably will. And then put on another coat. So I can still see there's a few areas that I'd really like to address. Yeah, we're just trying to beat the raindrops here. That's the main thing. And in case this tape ends kind of abruptly, we know we're going to pick it up on the next tape. So until we leave the Midgley's contest, I guess this is the only thing we're going to work on. We really can't even fly with the way the weather is. All this crappy weather. So. It'll feel good when this guy gets back in the air. I feel real good when I have my Tiger Cat ready to roll. There's supposed to be some other twin engine planes at the Midgley Contest too, so we're just looking forward to seeing them. Yeah, we'll let this stay out here as long as, well, it looks like it's going to rain any minute. As long as we can keep it out here, let it cook off, the more we'll wet sand this down, give it another coat of clear. Another coat of silver, not clear. Oh, well, this is drying up out here. I try to get the sun shining on it. One of the things I'll be able to do while this is cooking up because we haven't had any rain in the last, uh, the last two hours. What we want to do is take a look at that callus and maybe we can do, get some work done on that cow while this is drying up. Oh, what I did, I laid this down on a piece of... Uh, a piece of Teflon so nothing sticks to it. These are the drops of epoxy. And I imagine what I'm going to have is plenty of carving and sanding here but if I can salvage just one of the things it'll be a lot less work than making up new mounts and and whatever. So what I'm going to do is we're at the end of this video. I'm going to try to uh, do this off camera and just get this all sanded out and ready to fit up. It just looks like it's going to be a lot of sanding and bondo and everything else. And if we can't use it, of course, uh, just a simple solution would be we'll make up another cowl. But we'll see how that works out in the next day or so. In the meantime, the best thing, the best solution here is going to be just let this dry up. Whoa! Look at this bird! Bird! This plane is this <laughs> bird accident prone. Did you see that? I couldn't train him to do that. I guess this isn't a safe place to keep it. I'm not sure, but anyway. We want to get that nice smooth finish, and it probably will take a couple more sandings of silver. We want to get that all nice and smooth. Then, of course, I've got to paint the red trim, the black trim, ink it. I'm not sure. I'm, yeah, if, if we had more flying weather, I'd be itching to go fly, but it looks like, and I've said before, they predicted five days of rain, and we've already had three of them. So... There's still a couple of spots, and you can see what happened here. I put my finger in it up here. A couple more little repair spots, but when I think of it being all in one piece, very comforting to know it's all in one piece anyway. And we will pick this up on the next tape.
What a start to the Tiger Cat project. Just hard to believe. Unbelievable.